Whoa, this is huge. Oh, we have a count of Reggie Pizza Man. <laughs> OB1 play. Yes, right. What's up? Hello, All right. OB1 play. everybody how are y'all doing before we get started with the video you already know man give the video a like like thumbs up thumbs up thumbs up all right we have a couple of dope 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 gaming news out of do you see this game right here do you see this game right here for spoken ladies and gentlemen you are looking at the best looking open world caveat open world game ever ever square enix has come out and made some bold predictions and further flexes the playstation 5's architecture genius all right a couple of outlets have record, uh, reported on this. This is coming from PushSquare.com. PS5 console exclusive. This is going to be exclusive to the PlayStation 5, by the way, starring a black female, which is, I think, the first ever for Square Enix, much less a huge AAA open world game. Console exclusive for Spoken, coming to the PlayStation 5 exclusively, aims to be the best looking open world game ever ever all right <laughs> square enix um um square enix has lost the ambitions for spoke for 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 spoken um in a recent interview um for amds and check out the technology they're going to be using to make this happen AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution Technology, Luminous Production Studio boss Takashi Aramaki from, from Square explained that the developer's goal is to <coughs> achieve the highest quality visuals ever seen in an open world game. Because if you notice, I think this was the problem with Halo Infinite uh, when it was first revealed. Dudes were looking at it like, Ah, the game doesn't look that, whoa, groundbreaking next gen. It's because this is the first time they're making Halo an open world game. And whenever a game is open world, you are rendering pretty much that entire landscape at the same time, which puts a tremendous strain. Oh my goodness, this gameplay just looks amazing. Strain on the system. But with this new technology and the, i like how the article breaks it down because a lot of dudes are like obi wan what is this whole fidelity fx super resolution what it is is it um utilizes machine learning to reconstruct lower resolution images and output them with more clarity and so soon we're not even going to be able to tell the difference between native 4k and checkerboarding or some developer tricks to make the image look 4k pretty much with this technology it looks exactly the same the naked eye won't be able to tell the difference uh, it says this uh, it, it, the article continues to explain it this means that in essence games can achieve 4k without demanding the computational power required to output the resolution natively and so this gives more headroom to developers to create bigger, denser worlds while still ensuring good image quality at 60 frames per second. Just imagine this game running 60 frames per second, 4K, huge, big open world. This is next gen gaming. I bought a next gen console to push gaming forward. Not to still be playing having the same experience I had last gen, this game is going to fit the bill. And so I am super hyped 
for this game, one of my most anticipated games. I wanted to say this game comes out, I think it's 2022 next year. Keep this game on your radar. Sony with them exclusives, continue to kill it. Forspoken is going to be the best looking open world game we've ever experienced and I can't wait to get my hands on it. Speaking about best looking games, <laughs> Digital Foundry just um, did a tech analysis on Star Wars Fallen Jedi. And they compared the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X versions. And this is one of those cases where the PlayStation 5 version actually outperforms the Xbox Series X version. And... Pretty much they said the game's the game is identical on both consoles. So don't even I already know what's gonna go on in the chat. Uh Obi-Wan. Oh, uh, you always hating on Xbox, bro. Blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. Whatever. You know what you got when you clicked on this video. But <laughs> I'm not just gonna hate on Xbox. Um When it comes to third party games, some games run better a little some games run a little bit better on the PlayStation 5, and some games run a little bit better on the Xbox Series X. At the end of the day, both consoles are gonna give you the same gaming experience when it comes to multi-plats. <laughs> when it comes to exclusives, Sony has Xbox beat by a mile. That is not even close, bro. Just think about all of the exclusives that's launched since the PS5 came out. Um, I'm talking about even if they came out on the PlayStation 4, uh, PlayStation exclusives, Sackboy, Miles Morales, Demon Souls, true console exclusive, Ratchet Clank, true console exclusive, um, Returnal, true console exclusive, um, um, Keen about the Xbox has had nothing. We're finally gonna get Halo in the fall. So, when it comes to exclusives, it's not even close. And even when dudes keep saying, oh, Obi Wan, but wait, just wait till the games start dropping. Y'all act like Sony's gonna stop coming out with exclusives. They're gonna continue to keep on being ahead of Xbox, bro. And so, another third-party game where the PlayStation 5 version looks um, a lit runs, is, and it's with the frame rates. The frame rates were a little bit more no noticeable on the Xbox Series X, but at the end of the day, you're getting the same gaming experience no matter what console you choose. 10 greater than 12, 12 greater than 10, it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, and last news item of this video today marks the 25th anniversary of the most revolutionary home console of all time the nintendo 64 and i said this on twitter make sure you follow me on twitter at obi one place i said on twitter man Nintendo had the title of the power, had the power of the console in the title of the console. 64, meaning the PlayStation 1 was only 32 bits. The Sega um, Saturn was only 32 bits. We got, a we got a 64 bit power console, the most powerful console. Nintendo was going for power and that's when Nintendo was my priority, bro. Mario 64 forever, forever changed 3D gaming. Before Mario 64, most games on the PlayStation 1 controlled like a tank. Go and play the first um, Tomb Raider on the, um, on the um, PlayStation 1. You have to move Laura Croft, stop, turn the actual character, then move her in another direction. Mario 64 still those core mechanics still being used by game developers even today in your favorite 3D games. Zelda, Ocarina of Time, one of the most iconic um, games of all time, of all time, came out on the Nintendo 64. The combat, the Z targeting, strafing around your enemies, still being used by developers to this day. And this was, you had the Nintendo 64, and then the GameCube. GameCube was more power than, powerful than the PlayStation 2. And then you had the GameCube. The GameCube was the last time Nintendo was like 
great in my opinion like just going for power and whoa I'm getting a next gen experience Nintendo's moving technology forward now don't get me wrong Nintendo carved out their own lane the games are still fun to play but they don't hit the same anymore bro especially third party games running at 20 frames per second bro all right happy anniversary to Nintendo 64 that's why dudes don't understand like Obi-Wan how, how can you be so disappointed in Nintendo right now y'all weren't there bro during the NES days picking up the tickets at Toys R Us to get your NES games to go home play Mario 3 and never having an experience like this on any other platform the game but just the best graphics you've ever seen bro Super Nintendo groundbreaking super Metroid Super dudes are talking about Metroid Dread I had that experience 25 30 years ago on my Super Nintendo Super Metroid is still the best Metroid game ever, bro, on the Super Nintendo. Of course, Metroid Dread looks better. But I feel like it's going to be the same experience. Super Nintendo. Crap, Super Metroid looked better than anything on the market. Mario Kart looked crazy good at the time. Street Fighter almost one-to-one -one from the arc, and it wasn't at the time. It felt like it was one-to-one. -one. But Super Nintendo, groundbreaking. Nintendo 64 blew my mind. Even the GameCube, fantastic gaming experience. I felt like it was a generational leap. Going from the GameCube to the Wii, same thing. Going from the Wii to the Wii U, the Wii U was already outdated. I like the Wii U too, because of Splatoon. Just because of Splatoon. <laughs> Just because of Splatoon. For the, to the Wii U, um... It was already a generation behind it when uh, uh, PlayStation and Xbox. That's when you real was obvious that Nintendo was lacking. Well, on the Wii, it was obvious. But now this generation with the Switch, don't get me wrong. And it's crazy. The Switch is probably the greatest Nintendo console of all time now. Just the fact that it has the Super Nintendo library within the system. But it's one of my least favorite Nintendo consoles. Just because when, when I'm playing like the PlayStation exclusives and I go back and play the Nintendo games... I'm like, man, Nintendo, y'all drop the ball. My opinion, my channel, I can say whatever I want. Even though what I'm saying is straight facts. And you know it, and you're denying it deep down in your heart. <laughs> All right, dudes, <laughs> this video went longer than I thought. Sound off in the comment section below. <laughs> I want to know. But before you go, bro, click that subscribe button. Stay up to, oh, my kids want to come in. I'm going to let my kids come in for the outro, bro. We can do it. We just chilling. Click that subscribe before you go, bro. Click, click that, that subscribe button. button. Stay, Stay up to date. All things gaming, bro. We out. Peace. Peace.